Hello everyone, my name is Yuri and I'm your TA for this experimental design class and here I'll show an art tutorial that I prepared and made for you guys so that can uh, help you in the during the class um, I'll make this link available in, in the link for the tutorial available on Manaba for you to use at any time um, after you watch these uh, videos okay so moving on to the tutorial first I'll explain why I think R is a good uh, programming language for experimental analysis in specific and uh, answering the question why I should spend time learning R one of the main reasons for me to like R is that it's free and open source you can use it without having to pay and, the and this makes the community quite big and easy to access and to discuss ideas with for me in specific I find that one of the reasons why R is better than MATLAB this is a personal um, choice, so I understand that some will prefer, still prefer MATLAB, but you know, for me, being free is very important. Another good thing about R is that it has many different packages. You likely will find a package that do what you will want to do, so and they are easy to install, uh, which is very nice. Also, they have a great support for data analysis, for example, creating graphs, images, and statistical tools. And in terms of the statistical tools, I find it much better than Python. Uh, I think Python is somewhat limited in the amount of statistical tools available for um, comparing different types of data and distribution. But again, it's just a personal pre preference. Uh, another cool thing about R that I really like, it's not really about programming, but it's that R, you can do many things on R. For example, you can program on R, you can create books on R, you can make presentations on R. And for example, this tutorial even, I made it on R. I find it a quite um, feature, quite interesting feature to, to use. But well, anything has its drawbacks. And one of the main drawbacks that can be a little bit um, complicated is that R can be a little bit slow. Especially if your code is poorly written, like mine, for example. Um, another thing that causes a lot of discussion is that when you start indexing, you start with one. I know that many people prefer to start with zero. I find it just sad to have to change between zero and one, but yeah, it's a, some, of so, some sort of drawback. The third problem is that um, it can be, it can consume a lot of memory. And this is, can be complicated, especially if you're dealing with um, data, data sets that are quite huge or implement a neural network that has many different um, layers and is going to, to consume a lot of memory when processing or things like that. But anyhow, uh, because R has the advantages, especially for our, the topics related to this class, I think it's worth your time learning a little bit of it. So let's move on to the next topic, which is how to install and use packages. Generally, it's quite easy. Most of the times you can just call this function in R, install packages, um, and give the name of the package that you want to install. For example, if you had a dummy package called name of the package, you just need to run install packages into uh, between um, these symbols that I forgot the name and use the name of the package. Um, in this tutorial in specific, you, you uh, I will use a lot the gplot package and it's quite useful for showing data, for visualizing and creating images. So I suggest that you try to use the install package function and get a little bit familiar with this method with this idea of how to install for installing the ggplot for some reason that I actually don't know why when installing you need to call ggplot2 so there you go um, do it at home and then after installed you can load packages so how do you do that? after install you still see some confirmation and then you need to load the package you can just use the same idea calling a function a name of the package so for the ggplot, you just need to type library and the ggplot inside, like here. So these code blocks here, I didn't talk about it before, but um, you can just click here for run code and they will run the code for your code that is inside here. And you can start over if you want to change something. So for example, if I don't want to show uh, to load the library, I just want to print, for example, hello road. I can just type there click on run and there you go you just have the output here if you, if you start over everything goes off 
and as it was, as I said, for you. So you can play a little bit and if you made a mistake or if you want to change something or just come back, start over, run code. It doesn't show anything because the library is already uh, loaded. I made it uh, pre uh, available in the tutorial before starting. Okay, so the next part of our tutorial is I'm going to show you how simple it is to use R, especially for exploratory um, analysis when creating some visual visuals and for that I'm going to use data sets that are already available in R. They, when you install R, these data sets already come pre-installed so you just you can, can just use it them as they are. The idea is just to make it easy to experiment and experiment and try the functions without having to worry too much about a lot data set or specifics of different data sets. Right now, I'm going to use the uh, MT cars. It's a data set with information about fuel consumption and 10 different aspects of automobile design and performance for 32 cars. This was used in a research published, I think, in the last century. And it's nice because uh, we can explore a lot of that. So before um, I, I get into the details of how to show data, I'm going to ask our a little bit of information about this data frame. So um, when I use this question mark, it's the same as using the function help, which shows information about the package, about the data set, sorry. So for example, we have the data set, where it comes from, and it's this documentation. It, empty cars stands for motor trend car road tests. We have a description, how to use, we just call empty cars as we are doing. What is, what's inside, so the 10 features, the 11 features that he has, are shown here. Some information, for example, as I said, it was used in a publication a long time ago, where it got from, and some examples on how to use this. This help function is quite useful, and I run it many times, even with functions that I know, because sometimes I forgot, like I forget what are the parameters, or um, I want to get into specifics on how to use um, a value or the output of how it is. So you can just use help and the name of the, the, the thing you want to ask for help or just the interrogation, the question mark and the data. So the same goes and it works again. Okay, so now that you know about the, the empty cars data set, we can just use the plot function to plot an image. Um, it's going to be a scatter plot of the uh, this data set that we are using in terms of the weights. So one way of getting the columns is to use this dollar sign weight. In terms of uh, the M MPG, which is the miles per gallon, how long it moves with, with um, a gallon, which is a measurement of um, volume, gasoline volume. So you can just run here and then you see that you need to do much to have a plot that can show some information about your data set. So as I said, this um, column of the empty cars called weight returns the weight of the car as the MPG returns the gas consumption uh, proportion of miles per gallon on the data set. If you want more information about the plot function, you can also ask for help on the function, not only on data sets, but functions and are available and the documentation tells information about it. All right. We can do the same plot with ggplot2, which I was talking before, and it was my example to show how to install and, learn and load packages. I'm going to run this, it's going to give me the same output as before, but I find it a little bit more um, beautiful and nice to look at. So it's just an, uh, another version of the same plot as before. Okay, cool. So let's move now for the syntax about R. So I'm going to give you some basics on this. For example, R is case sensitive. I think most of the programming langu languages that we use R. So for example, te uh, temp is not the same as temp with uh, upper case letters. We use hashtag to define for commenting lines of code. So if you just want, don't want to use, to, to, if you want to comment a line in terms of adding some information, just removing for the code, you just can use the hashtag. You can separate codes by line as I generally do, or you can also use the um, same column symbol, but it's very uncommon, but you can use. So for example, if I want to put same column here, it would work as before. You didn't see anything because I'm not showing anything, but it 
didn't make a mistake. Didn't make uh, result in an, an error. Okay, so well, uh, the first important thing about in any program language is how to use variables. So to create a variable, you can assign use this um, left arrow sign or equal. I think at the beginning of the language, uh, the, the history of R, this was the most common. Then they changed to the equal sign. But both would do the same thing. So you can give the var one or var two different values as we would do in any programming language. If you want to see the result, well, what is in var two, for example, you just can show the. You can just type the the variable and then you print the value. Or if you want to be more specific, you can just type print, and you show the value anyhow. There you go. So as I said. To print the value of a variable, you can use print and a variable name. Or just the name of the variable. In most cases, just the name of the variable is enough, but keep, a uh, keep that in mind that not all the time. So maybe you run in a situation where you thought this would work, but you, you maybe would need to use the print function. function. So there we go. I'm giving the var1 value of 1, var2 the value of 10. I'm printing var1, so there you go, 1. I'm printing var2, and then I get 10. And I can also do some um, processing the data, so I can sum what the value of one, var1 and var2, and then it, the R language will also show the result, which is 11, right? 1 plus 10 is 11. And so these are the two different methods that you can use for printing variables and values. So let's move on to functions that are in R. The first function that we will learn is the C function. It's for, short for concatenate, and we use a lot to join values to create a vector. So you concatenate, for example, these values here, and my vector become a vector, when I'm going to show the result, just click in there, and there you go. We have important functions that I think most of you would like to, likely to use them during the course of the, of the, of the course, First one is mean, the second one is var for variance, and the third one is the SD for standard deviation. So we have the same vector, and I'm going to print the values of the mean of the vector, the variance, and the standard deviation. So we have the mean value is 3.625, the variance is 398 and something else, and the standard deviation is almost 2. All right, you can also assign the results of a, of a function call to a variable and then show the value the, the function the variable value or process it as we will do in most of the programming languages so as uh, I did before the mean here is the same as before as just I just stored in a, in a value in a function sorry I just store it in a variable and print it yeah, nice. We know, we know how to use the mean function, the variable function, the std, but what if you have some problems? What if you don't understand exactly what, what it does? Well, let's ask for help with the question mark or the help function. And we again have the, 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 document, the R documentation. It's just um, a function that calculates the arithmetic mean. You use like mean and the variable. Uh, these three points here in the function means that you can add extra parameters um, for the call, but if you call it just with mean and x, it's okay. And there you go, we have a full, full description of what the function does, some references, um, another examples if you want other types of means, um, and some like, real example of in case you want to reproduce and explore a little bit more. Okay, so now we know how to call functions, we know how to store values if, in variables. How do we can, how can we index the, the vectors and values that we have? So most of the times you're going to use the square bracket notation, it's this one. And the index can be the position of the result or a logical test. So you can say, okay, give me the third value of, uh, the third value in the third position of the vector. There we go, just do this. Um, you can also store just the, the, third of, uh, the third value of my vec in a variable. This is normal, I think, no surprises here. Um, you, can, you can use the function C inside the brackets and get the first, the fifth, 
the sixth and the eighth value of the vector my vector. You can use this function to points here that will go will select fun values the positions three, four, five, six, and seven. Everything between three and eight. And you can use logical uh, indexing. So everything that is bigger than four, I am going to get. So everything in the vector that has a value of four, and I mean indexing that and get those values. Or you can do something more complicated where you want values that are less, less smaller than six and are bigger than two. And, and then you put in the brackets. So let's see how it goes. So the third value is the first output is one, as it is here. As we did here, we stored this in a, uh, in a variable and showed again one. For this case here, we are getting the first, fifth, sixth, and eighth positions, the values in the, those positions. So the first one is two, it's here. The fifth one is um, one, two, three, four, five. So four, there you go. Then three, here it is. And the last one with seven. So for this call here, um, everything after three until eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you have it. All values that are bigger than four. So we, two is not going to appear, three not, one, but six and seven are the ones that are going to appear. There you go. Quite simple. And finally, the last more complicated call, everything that is bigger than two, but lesser than three. And it's three, four, four, three, four, three, three. You can go as crazy as you want. Enjoy messing with those indexes. One nice thing about doing indexes is we, we, can, we can replace elements. We can change the values of some elements in a vector after we create the vector. So with the same vector as before, we get the, the element of the fourth position and we change it to, 50, to 500. So we would, the vector will be the same as before, with the exception of the, uh, the value in the fourth position that will become 500. We can go and do, for example, I want to change the, pos the values of the vector in position six and seven, and both of them become 100. And you can see that. And you can do any type of indexes, any, any kind of attribution here. Sorry, I clicked in the wrong button, so I just want to run the code here. So as I said, the, per, the fourth um, element becomes 500, and then I also keep the 500 changed, but I'll also change po uh, positions value 6 and 7 to 100. And then you can play a lot if you want. So moving on to the next and last topic of, of this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of data, um, and most of them you are familiar with. Scalars, vectors and arrays, ma ma matrices, lists. And then I'll talk about the most important one, which is a data frame. People that use Python, Excel, and LibreOffice, maybe they know about this, data, this, kind of this type of data, the data frames, but it's so important and very used in R, I'm going to refresh and introduce for those that don't, don't know about it. So it's very similar, the, the main characteristic for the data frame is that it's very similar to a matrix, but it stores any type of data. So you can store numbers, but you can also store strings and other things that you would like to, to store. So in generally, each row corresponds to an individual observation, where the columns correspond to different measures, uh, different measures or recorded variables. And yeah, let's see how, how it goes. I'll create a manual, manual data frame and then talk about, a little bit about it. So first I create a, 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 an array of heights. So we have different heights, then uh, an array of weights and an array of people. So Joanna here, weight 65 and it's uh, one, one meter and 80 centimeters. The, for Charlotte, the same goes, 50 and 155 and uh, so on and so forth. So we call, to create a data frame, we call the data frame function. We set it to a, uh, a variable, we call, I call it data f for data frame. I'm defining the first column as p height, attribute, giving it the p height vector. 
I'm defining the second column as weight and giving the vector p weight and the names as the same. And I set strings as factor to avoid some problems when doing this um, construction. So let me show how the data frame is like. So we have the, the variable data f with height, weights, and names. We have like double length, which is numeric, and uh, character, which is the strings. We only have five rows, so yeah, some extra information, and there you go. So as you can see, we show the values in the data frames, as we do for the most traditional data types. It doesn't change, it's still a variable, so we can deal with it as we would do we do before. Not, so we can index, we can manipulate, we can multiply, we can get means of columns or rows. You can treat it, treat it as a normal variable as you are used to. One nice, there are two things that I, two functions that I really like about when I'm dealing with data frames with the head function and the tail function. The head function shows the first entries of the data frame. The tail function shows the last date entries of the data frame. Generally, when I create a data frame, I just I use the first one and the, the, the second function. I use head first, then tail, to tell me about some information and I can see if there was some mistake or how the data frame is like, get an idea of it. So I'm using the same data frame as before. I'm just getting the, the first three elements of the data frame and then the last three elements of the data frame. So see, this, since this data frame has only five rows, there is going to be some repetition, but don't worry about that. So there we go. We get the first three lines. We can check that is the first three. And then we get the last three. And as I said, there is one line as, uh, repeated in both cases. But that's just because our data frame is a little bit small. Okay, so I know that most of you are going to run your uh, experiments and simulations or whatever you're doing in your program language, which sometimes in different computers like clusters or uh, um, servers. So likely you, how you're going to use R is that you're going to load and save data on it. So the main function to load data is this read CSV. It was supposed to really only, only comma separated values, which is the type of um, files from Excel, but actually it works for many different kinds of extensions. So for example, I'm loading a TST, TXT file with this function. I already loaded, this is already preloaded for you, but if you want to type at home, you can just call this function here. And there are some um, parameters that I set, for example, header true and separate slash tab, because that's how the file is separated with tabs and we have a header, we have some information of the name of the column, so I'm telling that for the function. So since the, since the files change very frequently, I, I cannot tell you what is the best sets of parameters that you can set, so I always recommend you looking at the data before trying to load in R, check it in details, look at the documentation for this function and set the best parameters. It, it may, might take some time, but it's it's going to work eventually. So I already loaded the, this file in the squid data. So let's check if it's really a data frame and then look at the six first rows. So there you go, it's a data frame and the first um, six rows are this one. Sorry. Again, so data frame and the six rows. Um, the head function, if you don't supply a number for n, it lo loads the first six, but you can just, for example, get the three first. Okay, as we did before. Another useful form to get information about data frames is to call the summary function. And so I'm doing here and showing the, the output. It gives a summary of each column of the, of the data frame. So it's going to give a summary of the sample, the specimen, year, month, weight, sex, and so on and so forth. We have a lot of columns here. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to, to do a summary in a, in a variable, for example, the sample. It doesn't make sense to calculate the minimum value, the first quartile, the median, but for a weight it does. And it's very nice, for example, we get to know that the, the slimmest squid only weighs 38, I think, pounds, and the, while the, the heaviest was much higher. 
more than 10 times heavier with 809 pounds. We also get the mean and the median, which are different values. So it tells a lot of information. You can see if there's some mistakes. So for example, you have a weight and you expect a number but got an, not a value here. Maybe you, you did something wrong. So there are other options for learning data. For example, um, read, as, um, read SV2 or read table. They work for many different types, such as XL, um, XLS, JSON, R data, etc. If you have different types of data, maybe you should try to look on the internet because some specific types of um, extensions have required different functions. All right, so now we have data frames. We created manually or we reloaded for, from a file. But how can we manipulate? Most of the times we want to do a lot of um, manipulation on the columns and we can use the dollar sign notation for accessing the values on the columns. I will keep using the squid data frame and I'm going to show the weight. Then I'm going to calculate its mean and a summary of the weight. The summary here is going to be the same as I showed before, but only for the weight. So the, all the data here, because I'm just showing all the data of the column, so it's very big. Then we show the mean. There you go, which is the mean here. And the summary with all the information as we did here, as we did before. Okay. So different ways of getting the same information. Sometimes we, we want to store this value or looking onto, only on the summary of a specific column. So we can do that. As I said, for those, those previous types of variables, we were talking about vectors, but data frames are also our variables, so we can um, index, as we did before, selecting only, for example, the first and fifth column, or the first eight rows. So if you don't want to define the column, just put a comma and nothing, and that's what you get. You get all the columns and only the six, the eighth, first rows. Here's the same. I was only considering, I was only worried about get, selecting the first and fifth column, all the rows, so nothing and comma. If you want to make a more complicated index, for example, selecting those rows and the first three columns, you can do like that. There is, there is no need to do in order, okay? So you can put 60, 78 before four, and it would work anyhow. So one, two, three, four, five, we only have five rows with three columns. And we can do log logical indexing, which is quite convenient. If you want, for example, only squids that weight more than 12, which are all of them, you get everything. But for example, if we, since we know that the, mean is, the minimum is uh, 38, if I put a higher value, not all rows are going to be um, selected. Okay, another useful Functions that we can use to treat data frames is the aggregators. Most of them are the uh, from the apply family. For example, apply, 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 apply. They do different things, but they all are aggregating and doing a, a function to the data frame given some information. So the apply here is going to calculate the mean of the weight given near in the data, okay? So given the squid data, getting the weights of the, the squids for different years and then calculate the mean. So we have three days and the mean, the three years, and then we get the mean weight for those years. So it's quite convenient, quite useful. We could also use the aggregate function. Um, I generally prefer to use the apply because they are from the apply family and just some variation, but the aggregate can do the same. It can be more flexible sometimes. The syntax is like this. You define which the, is the column that you want to pr uh, apply the aggregate function. Um, you separate by year and use the function mean. So you are going to apply mean given these years to the weight column. And Shana made the same thing as before. And for example, we can do, I, I think this is a little bit wrong. So uh, we can do the aggregation function, calculating the mean, but now I'm going to separate by year and by month. So a little bit more discrete. So we have, for example, the first year, the first month, this was the mean, the second year, the first month, and then you go long, long, long. So this is, I'm getting to the end of uh, the first video. 
So in this case, I'm going to show you how to save data frames. So you, in, it's generally what's going to happen is you're going to load data, process it, and then you're going to save the results, right? So that's why saving is important. I'm going to use the write table function, but as the, the load function, it can, there are many different types of functions to write, to save data. In this case is write table, but you, if you want a specific type of um, output, you might try, you might want to go online and check for that. So I'm calculating the, the means, as we did before, by year and month, of the weight of the squids. Put that on this variable, renaming the columns. So the columns here, as before, like group one, two, and X, doesn't make sense. So I'm just putting year, month, and mean. I'm going to save this variable on this file, keeping the names of the columns, but no names on the rows. And I'm separating by comma, but I could separate by anything else, such as a tab. And then I'm just going to read to see if the output worked. And there you go. We have the output of this function call separated by tabs. I think I don't like it, so I'm going to just point to a comma. And again, and there you go. Year, month, and mean. And this is the data frame that I loaded after writing it. So I hope this was useful and you got to know a little bit of about the R package. These are the basics. You can go back here and can um, you can edit these codes and play a little bit so that you can get a little bit useful with the syntax and how to use R. And I'll, then we move to the next video where I'm going to show some statistics, how to use the call statistics function in R.